What was the dumbest thing you thought as a child? I used to believe that night is brought about by clouds, dark ones, of course. Never felt the need to clarify this with anybody. It was an obvious fact. I used to think trees made wind. Trees move. Wind happens. Can't explain that. Edit. My highest rated comment is about how dumb of a kid I was. Thanks for the silver, kind stranger. Tips with Oras. I was recently talking with a data scientist about how non-data scientists could misinterpret data. He actually gave me this exact example of someone he knew who used to think that to describe causation versus correlation. That if you drink while peeing, you'll keep peeing until you stop drinking. <laughs> Why are you drinking while peeing, first of all? <laughs> I'm not. Or rather, I didn't, because I didn't want to infinitely pee. When I was really young, I was convinced I was pregnant. I'm a man, by the way. With a baby cat named Bridget. My family decided to see how long I would believe this. So they never told me how ridiculously impossible that was. I went on believing it for about five months. That's how long little me thought cat pregnancy lasted. And then when the baby never came, I went to my mom and asked when Bridget would be born. She finally told me that boys can get pregnant and humans can give birth to cats. I was traumatized. Little me was so excited to be a cat father and then it was ripped away from me. I was such a stupid kid. Edit, since so many people keep asking. No, I never ended up getting a cat. And no, I didn't f*** a cat. <laughs> this would have been around six years old. And I was raised Catholic and thought God put babies in your stomach. So I thought he put a cat in me. And as for the name, I just really like the name Bridget. And I still do. I'm sorry for your loss, but I'm a cry laughing at my desk right now. When I was a young kid, maybe between five to nine, my dad took me to this tiny grass runway airport in my town, and we went on a short plane ride in a small Cessna around the valley. My dad sat in the back and I was up front with the pilot. While we taxied off the ramp and out to the runway, I was given permission to move the yoke. I thought I was steering the aircraft the whole way. I told my mom that I was taxied the plane. In school, I told my class that I taxied the plane. In fact, it was so strong a memory that I grew up remembering the memory without evaluating the experience. I was home on leave from my naval aviation squadron when I was talking about that flight with my dad and I was thinking about it and I had this long pause. And I said, holy shit, dad, I just realized that I wasn't steering that Cessna. My father laughed his ass off. Why did you realize you weren't steering the plane? It's a yoke, some kind of steering mechanism that only works in the air and they have a different way to steer on the ground. Yes, you are right. The steering yaw, i.e. left to right, is done with the foot pedals which connect to the rudder on the vertical edge of the tail of the aircraft. What I was moving, the yoke, would only move the ailerons, which would control the roll of the plane during flight, or by pushing the yoke forward or pulling back would change the pitch, i.e. lower the nose into a driving position or rise into a climbing position again during flight. Because we were on the ground, the pilot was in full control of the taxi maneuver by steering with the foot paddles and controlling the throat and prop. I remember watching the movie Cocoon with my grandparents. I could not have been more than four. For some reason I deduced that in order to become adults, children had to die in this pool cocoons and be reborn old. I freaked my cousins out and had a whole group of kids crying at a holiday party over our impending doom. Ruined Christmas pictures that year. Are you by chance a caterpillar? That there is a tiny human inside the TV who executed what the remote was telling him to do. For example, when you press the button to increase the volume, he's being hit in a specific way that's let him know that he has to go and manually increase the volume. 
I imagined a barracks full of tiny men living in the tap who poured out little buckets of water when I used the sink. That if people are going to study something, they just sit in a circle with other students and think about what they want to do. And as soon as they find out, they are done and they can leave. I wish. <laughs> I like the way Yan Guryu thought. Thought we'd have too many Lego engineers if that was the method. Can you ever have too many Lego engineers? <laughs> I thought that there would be a baby inside every girl's stomach as soon as she's born. And inside that baby's stomach too, there were a tiny baby. The cycle goes on and on. And that the baby keeps growing as we grow. And after getting married, the doctors will cut the stomach and they have the baby. And they take the baby out to make space for another baby. My uncle is a priest for an obscure Hindu offshoot religion. And he told me quite young that I shouldn't play sport because each person only gets a set number of breaths in their life. And getting out of breath used them up quicker. I used to spend hours laying in bed trying to make my breaths as long and slow as possible. In fairness, I actually have a decent lung capacity as an adult, so maybe it had a positive effect. Jeez, that had to scare the hell out of you. Good breathing technique for relaxing, but not if you're afraid you're going to die. Yeah, he's weird with his religion. My grandmother, his mom, died last year and we had her funeral in a Christian church. He was doing an eulogy and then decided to tell everyone he was a Hindu priest and read out a passage from his holy book. He hadn't pre-warned everyone about this. I don't think I've ever seen anyone hold back rage more than the vicar at that moment. When I undied, she had a sutra plate. Somehow they got a 10 hours version and everyone was a little nervous about being the one to turn it off. I was vaguely aware of a TV show called Iron Sides about a lawyer in a wheelchair. Whenever I heard the word paralegal, I thought it meant a paraplegic lawyer. It made sense to me that people in wheelchairs could make excellent lawyers based on the nature of the job and their physical limitations. I thought paralegals were lawyers who'd parachute to the scene of a crime so people would have their story straight before the cops showed up, like paratroopers. That's an amazing image. Especially if they're already in wheelchairs. That the local mosque in my city was Aladdin's vacation home. Over there's the bakery. That over there is the bank. Excuse me? Oh, that? <laughs> well, that's Aladdin's vacation home. <laughs> Similarly, I didn't realize there was anything supernatural about God and Jesus. I just thought they were a father and son around my own age at the time. They lived in the cathedral nearby. Just like my mom and I lived in an apartment together. I felt terrible as a kid to eat. I wouldn't eat in front of people and every meal I would find myself thinking poor food getting eaten because I was convinced they had emotions. I anthropomorphized everything as a kid. I also felt bad for the food I ate and for stepping on grass. The worst was stuffed animals. I remember we had a Christmas thing at school in first grade in which everybody brought a gift and then the teacher drew numbers to see who would get to pick the next gift. There was a huge cabbage patch tea set that all of the girls were drooling over, including me. Well, my number was called first, but I skipped the tea set and picked this dirty old teddy bear because I could not stand the thought of him sitting there watching as everything else got picked before him. Oh, now I'm picturing a kid who had no money to buy a gift for the class exchange. So they brought in a well-loved teddy bear, feeling terrified that nobody will like it and be mad at them. But what's the first thing to go? Their teddy bear. Some sweet little girl skipped over an amazing tea set and picked the bear instead. Grandparents were assigned to families, like I didn't know my grandma was my dad's mom. I don't know what I thought, but I remember being at my great-grandmother's funeral and asking my mom why my grandma was crying. When she replied, she's sad because her mother died. I was like, head explodes. So that's why we had to go visit her all the time. 
I just assumed she was this random old lady I didn't like to visit her because I couldn't be my rambunctious, chatty little four-year-old self. My mom is a shusher. I then had to ask about all of our other relatives. I was four when my grand-grandma died. I remember sitting with my grandma and she explained that great-grandma was her mom. So that kind of helped me understand why she was so sad. But then I asked, are you going to get a new mommy now? That made her laugh, so at least I was able to comfort her just a little. 